Hello again. My name is Carlos Rodriguez. I am a Sitecore consultant with Arc Systems. And in this video, I'm going to continue with my discussion about profiling content in Sitecore and how that could be used to drive personalization as it comes to your interactions with your customers. Okay. In part one, I went through a series of slides in which I described the process of creating a profile taxonomy once you've devised one. Um, how to use that to create profile dimensions and profile keys, uh, which provides a scoring-based system used to identify the significance of certain items or pages on your site course site to the types of individuals who would visit those sites. And that's what the profile taxonomy described. Once uh, you came up with this taxonomy and you applied these profiles to your items, that based on the collected profiles throughout the items, you can then decide what pattern your visitors are falling into, and then based on identifying that pattern, how you can personalize that site interaction so that you can keep your customers engaged and hopefully in the end get the customers to perform activities you would like them to perform on your site. So in part one, we discussed that uh, from a more theoretical perspective, um, showing you pictures of and images of how what mechanism Sitecore provides to carry out this process. What I want to do in part two as I go to the agenda is actually go through an example of performing this using Sitecore. Now in the example I'm putting together, um, I figured I would try to stick to something that we all may have some experience with. So hopefully we all have had experiences with streaming movies from some type of movie streaming service that you may access through apps on your phone or through your PC or perhaps through some other mechanism. What's becoming more common with these type of services is that as you watch movies through these services and as these movies fall into certain genres that based on the genre you seem to want to spend the most time in, they will give you recommendations on other movies you can stream from that system which may be of interest to you as a reflection of the genre you tend to visit the most as you use this um, particular movie service. So what I'm going to do is come up with an example where I'm going to create a mo movie's dimension. Within this movie's dimension, I'm going to define a set of genres such as action, animated, comedy, drama, horror, romance, and science fiction. Now, when you think about how this is applied, you, you, let's just decide that for each movie it's going to fit into one of these genres. Though I know that that may not be totally realistic because often movies fall into multiple genres. Let's say for the purposes of this example it's only going to fall into one of the seven genres I identified. So the way these profile keys will work is that they're used collectively on an item to identify their genre. Um, through this, we will talk about how to create a profile card because particularly after a while, setting each key individually gets tedious. So the profile card will help me with assigning all these keys at one time. And then we'll talk about how we would create pattern cards based on the taxonomy we came up for our movies. And I can use these pattern cards to determine what pattern this visit or visitor is falling into and how I can use that mechanism to customize the way the site behaves. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to get out of this slideshow and go into Sitecore. So here I have a Sitecore window open within this VM, and what I'm going to do is sign in using the super secret password that Sitecore provides when you first install it. And this takes me to the Sitecore launchpad, which if you haven't been here before, this is the interface that Sitecore provides to allow you to access the many tools that Sitecore comes with. The thing to remember is that Sitecore is primarily a CMS, um, but as Sitecore has evolved, it's become more of an experience platform where not only can you use Sitecore, Sitecore for content management, you could also use it for a variety of marketing features and analytics. And uh, what I'm going to be focusing on is one aspect of that, evolving a tool known as the Marketing Control Panel. Right now you see all these icons because I'm here as an administrator. Um, if I wasn't an administrator, I would have less icons. Certainly what I want to point your attention to is the icons to the left 
because the leftmost set of icons are for tools associated with analytics and experience management. The tool I'm going to specifically focus on is the marketing control panel. So what I'm going to do is click on this icon and launch that particular tool. Once I'm here, I'm in the marketing control panel and on this through this navigation pane on the left, I have access to the tools provided through the marketing control panel and they're organized into a tree structure we tend to call well if it's the content editor it's the content tree so maybe in the marketing control panel it's more of a control panel tree but this the idea being that uh, sidecore items as they are called are organized into a tree pattern where you have parents and children and one of the children of the marketing control panel parent is the profile section so I'll expand the profile section and when I do this particular profile section is made up of a number of profile dimensions, such as fun focus, function, movies, persona, and score. Uh, one way to look at the dimensions is that it's simply a uh, profile category of sorts, which is used to organize the keys, which are really involved in the scoring of those items associated with that particular dimension. Okay. Uh, so if I want to add a new dimension, all I would do is right click on the profiles parent and if I click on insert, this profile option is used to create a profile dimension. The dimension I'm going to focus on is movies and if I click on the movies dimension, uh, this is the item that would be created where I would give it a name and a type. What the type describes is what do I do with the aggregation of scores associated with visiting the items profiled with the movie's dimension. Okay, my first option would sum, which would simply mean that I would add the scores together. Uh, other options are, I'll scroll down a little bit, averages and percentage. So one way to look at sums, if I was to use baseball analogy, is that the sums are like the number of home runs you hit while average is more like the ERA, okay? And percentage is more like the number of, of bats you have and how I'm doing over the length of those at bats. So it's just a different way of approaching the scoring of the profiles which are collected to help to determine what pattern they fall into. I'm gonna stick with some because that tends to be the simplest. So in essence, the profile key that gets the largest number will tend to win and from a pattern matching standpoint. Okay. All right. So with that being said, let's talk about how the scoring taxonomy is achieved. If I expand movies, what I can show you are the seven keys that make up the movies dimension. Uh, and I did it in terms of genre. So I have action, animated, comedy, drama, horror, romance, and science fiction. If I click on one of the keys, like action, note that, <coughs> excuse me, the range of action is from 0 to 10. And if you leave min value blank, that's assumed to be a 0. So this range could be any value you want it to be. And as I go through the other genres, you'll see that despite which one I have, they all go from 0 to 10, which means that each key is going to be equally weighted against the other. Does that mean that I can have keys which are differently weighted against other keys in the same dimension? The answer is yes, and I imagine that a more complex marketing taxonomy would actually have such things in place. Uh, but we're going to keep our example relatively simple, so we're simply going to equally weight them. Okay. So what does this mean if I profile an item with the movie's dimension? Let me take a moment to show you that, and that will lead into my discussion about what profile cards are for. So what I'm going to do for the next moment is go back to the Sitecore Experience Platform launch, launch Pad where we started a short time ago. And if I go to the Content Editor, okay, what I'm going to do is go to a particular content item. And what I'm doing, by the way, is what I described in the slides in part one. Okay. I'm going to go to my holiday section because these are the items that I'm interested in assigning profiles to. So if I click on a particular item like Battle of the Hills, 
note that there's this icon all the way to the right, uh, which is your profiling icon. I'll go ahead and click on this a moment. And if I do, note that it then shows me the dimensions I've already defined in the profile section. It also shows me what, uh, I, what the profile taxonomy I've assigned to a dimension if one's already in place. I'm going to talk about more about what this romantic uh, particular designation is. It's a reflection of what we call a profile card, and that explanation is coming up. If I click on Edit for the Movies dimension, I chose a romantic profile card as opposed to assigning each key value separately, which I could also do. If I click on the Customize button, the keys of the dimension are actually exposed to me, and note that I can assign each value to a key, one key at a time. I have seven keys for the movies dimension. So if I'm working with 10 movies, that's not so bad. But once this becomes 100 or even 1,000 movies, then sending each key separately can be a real drag and be quite tedious. So that's where profile cards come into play. If I choose a profile card, like Romantic, oh, before I could do that, i got to turn off Customize. It sets all the keys up at once so that um, all I got to do is choose a card and I don't have to worry about setting each key separately. Note that for this particular card, Romance is a 10, but all the others at zero, which is why I'm getting a straight line on the chart. Okay, once I accept this, I'll click on OK and note that the Romantic uh, profile card has been assigned to this dimension. It will give me the name, the description of the card, and whatever image I set on the card. And if I click on OK, note that I will see, also see this card next to the Profile button for the item. And in addition to that, it will provide me the name, description, and image of that card that I could be used to be reminded of what profile card I assigned to the item. Now that I've described that, I'm going to go back to my launch pad like I did before using that Rubik's Cube like icon in the upper left. I'll go back to the marketing control panel so I can show you where the cards that I've created for movies have been defined. So in the movie section there's a profile cards folder and if I click on that here are my profile cards and I created those because I have no desire of assigning each value to its key separately for each movie. So what I decided to do instead is create a card that I can use to set all the keys at once. If I click on the Romantic Profile card, which I've used earlier, what I'll be able to show you is the name I gave the card, the description which showed up on that item when I saw what card was applied, and there's the image you saw, which I also applied to this card so that every time I see this image, I know what card is involved. Okay. How I set the keys is there's a section, or a field I should say, that allows me to set each key value directly so that every time I apply the card, these are the key values that will be set all in one shot. So as you can see, using profile cards does speed up the process of profiling my items. Now what's the difference between that and a persona card? If I click on the Anime Guy persona card, it really is a profile card. It just gives me more fields to fill out additional information about the profile card I'm trying to set up. So um, note that even though I didn't really fill out this card all that well, uh, I do want you to see that there's a lot more information I could provide to really describe what this profile means. And if I scroll up, I also have a similar field where I can set all the profile key values. And note that even though I've been using them as silos for the most part, a profile card or persona card can have a combination of values for different keys if it makes sense for how the profile is applied when it's applied to an item. And that's really the only difference between persona cards and profile cards. Okay, at this point I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to go back to my slide briefly. Uh, in this particular lesson, I did describe what's involved in setting up the profile dimension and the keys. I show briefly how they're applied to items and then how I can use this to create my profile cards and my persona cards before I do apply them to those items. 
In part three, I'll talk about how to apply these profile cards to items and then how to involve pattern cards.